Hello, fellow engineers, and welcome to Terraformers, a super addictive, yes, I'm aware I probably have a problem as I say that a lot, turn-based strategy game where the aim is to terraform the red planet from a barren Martian wasteland into a beautiful Engertopia. Now, I did just want to say that this video is sponsored, and as of today, it's just released from early access into the 1.0 release. And you can check it out yourself by heading to the Steam or GOG page. Links in my description. But yeah, to start off, we're going to start a new game. And rather than doing these scenarios or the weekly challenge, we're going to do a custom one. If you want to play on the same map as me, I'm going to use Seed Engineer. And then the numbers behind it, they're just like the goals above. So here we are on the red planet. Um, and you will notice that if we zoom in, this is our first city, New Mababana. Yeah, but before we get into that, we need a leader for this. So if we click this button here, we get a leader. And now these change throughout the game. Oh, look at this guy. He's got a hard hat. He's got a hard hat. I don't even care who the other person is we might just have to go for him so yeah expertise construction oh man i'm loving this guy give him a bid and he's my perfect mm. man anyway every leader has these skills down here the first one is always explore that allows us to explore the planet pretty obvious uh, but these other two they change depending on who you go for so this one has earthworks which allows us to destroy two rocks for free each turn and also modular apartments i'm um, also worth noting his specialization Building stuff is cheaper. Nice. Okay, so with an engineer in charge, I'm feeling pretty confident about what we're going to do. So on the left, we have our resources. And you'll notice around the map, all these locations that we haven't explored yet. Can you see they've got they've got little symbols above of all those resources? So essentially, if we go explore one of them, we're likely to get those resources. Not always. It's just a hint. And so we can come down to our lovely engineer here. We can click the explore button and then we can choose which one we want to explore. Now, I'm going to go for this one because I know water's pretty important early on because it helps us with farming. So if we explore there, you'll see we found an aquifer. So we get to collect the resources. We've got four water, three silicates, two titanium. Uh, but also once we do that, you can see the aquifer symbol is there. So if we click on this place, we can actually mine that to turn it into water. But there's also extract water for oceans because remember the aim of this is to terraform. Uh, and whilst an aquifer is pretty basic, later on you actually like get some really cool stuff like you can restart ancient volcanoes you can construct giant space mirrors you can even crash an ice asteroid into the planet all to help speed up the terraforming process but yeah for now let's continue with what we're doing so we've just unlocked a load of resources we can now click on our city and you can see there's all these little blobs about so these are like building blobs You'll notice some of them are covered in rocks. Now, as we hover over them, you can see it costs three power to remove each of those to give us a building spot. However, you remember our lovely leader, Jorge, he has that special ability where we can destroy two rocks for free this turn. However, you can only use one of his abilities per round. And since one ability is to explore, uh, if we want to remove these rocks, it's going to cost us electricity. So for now, I'm just going to place our headquarters. And I guess I'll place that in the middle there. Boosh. So we need to grow our population by building more buildings like habitats and things. And then over here on the left, this is our support. So you can see that's now got a plus one, which means we're gaining one every single turn. As we expand, as we like start polluting and stuff, that is going to go down. So you sort of want to focus on that fairly early as well. Uh, but the ultimate game, at least of this round, is to fill up this bar up here. And as you can see in the list there, pretty much everything that like helps your colony grow adds a point. So if we can get that to a thousand we're all good anyway we'll go back to space and then we've pretty much done everything we can this turn so if we go down to here and click this button on the bottom right boosh an entire day goes past and we're on to the next turn and now where the addictiveness comes in so every single day you get a new research project that you can unlock completely randomized so it changes every single playthrough now uh, we've got a greenhouse farm which costs 10 water but it gives us one food per turn uh, now you look at the bottom these are the cards i already have so i do actually have one of them already we got a tritium thermo generator which costs nine tritium which we which we don't have any of uh, but it produces power each turn and then the one on the right the lab that produces one science per turn for the cost of five nitrates and five silicates uh, which you don't have any of so i think i will just go with the greenhouse this time and then while we're here rather than explore i am gonna use his ability to get rid of some of these earthworks so remove that rock i reckon i think we'll go for a greenhouse i'll shove it maybe in that corner there now we're producing food every single turn and what do we need food for well if you look down here 
habitation module that costs 30 food, but it will grow our population and support. So in order to get more food, we need more water. And if you remember this aquifer, we do have the resources to mine. However, you cannot take over these places until you've actually controlled the area. So this is the number of population. And basically when that fills to the top, we get a plus one, which is like one expansion we can do in any direction. So for now, we'll go to the next turn and then I could go habitation module, but it's going to take me a long time to get another 30 food. We're only getting plus one at the moment. So I'll probably do a tuber farm instead. So that costs 10 nitrates, uh, but that will produce us a food every single round. So yeah, let's take that and then we'll have a look. Can we expand? Yeah, we can explore up there. So we're going to use explore this time. We're going to head north because there is a small hint of nitrates. So that will cost one electricity. And yeah, we found a rocky plane. So pretty much nothing, but we have nitrates, water and science that we can collect. Decent. And beyond that, that expands to two more areas. Oh, with lots of nitrates. So perhaps worth exploring those next time because then we can build our tuber farm. Uh, for now though, back into the city because look, we can actually afford a habitation module. So I'm going to shove that next to this. And look, when we build this, look at the background. Look at all this stuff that Earth is bringing us. And if we come up here, we can now see we're gaining the two population every single round. And that got us up to the next level so we can expand. And I'm going to go over to this aquifer and we are going to mine it with four of the electricity and four of the titanium. So boosh. Now we are producing one water per round and one food per round. So we're looking good. On to the next turn. And oh, a new trade route has opened. So we can click this little button down here and we can choose what we want to trade. So we probably want to use that to get the resources we don't have. But I think for now, we're probably fine since we don't have much of anything. Um, and I think I'm going to try and get that tuber thing. So I am going to go this way. Yes, rich soil. So we got four nitrates and three water from that. And then we'll go to the next round. So another day passes. Yeah, we got two of the same cards, but a new one, the hospital. So that provides seven support per turn, uh, but it does cost a lot of science and tritium as well, which again, we don't have. Uh, I think I will take the generator though. I could do with some electricity at some point. Uh, but yeah, for now, we're just going to keep exploring. So we'll do this one where we got silicates, water and the titanium that I needed. Oh, and also we just found a lost batch of supply crates. So we got 10 food. Cheers game. And we go to our next turn and oh, rising expectations. This is the trouble. The bigger your population gets, the more advanced you get the higher people's expectations are. So now our support income is dropping by five. So unfortunately, we're now in the negative. We're losing three support every single round. So that's something we do want to focus on. Uh, the upgrades this time, though, we could gain ourselves electricity with windmills. They only cost six titanium, pretty cheap. Or a brine electrolyzer. So you gain two support per turn for every building owned by the city that costs water. So the greenhouse costs water. We got two of those. So just with that, that'll get us back into the the positive on the support. So yeah, I think we will take that and then we just got to save up some titanium. We've only got two at the moment. So I'm going to do some trading to get that. I'm then going to explore down here because there's loads of titanium there. Yeah, we've got six. Oh, it's in a mineral cave. Look at the size of that. So we'll collect those resources and then the mineral cave. If we control this area. Oh, look, we got a decision. We can mine it for titanium. It will cost 20 happiness. Uh, just once though, not per turn. Yeah, or we can protect the natural heritage. I imagine this will be like the sort of decisions we have to make if we do like go and terraform planets like do we do what we did to earth and just mine it to crap or do we actually try and look after it well, since this is a game and not real, we're going to mine the hell out of it. Give me your resources. Oh boy, people are not happy now. Minus four support per turn, but we're making two titanium per turn. Nice. So on to the next round. Oh, road paver. We can pave a road. Sorry, as an ex-highway engineer, this is uh, pretty exciting to me. It costs 10 titanium, but it provides us with three expansions. We can make our city bigger, essentially. So I feel like I got to go for that, even though I probably won't use it anytime soon. Now, then we're going to explore down to here. Here, more titanium. Oh, there's actually a deposit there. So we could mine that if we take control of it. Okay, on to the next turn. And there have been some technological advancements, which basically means we get to pick one of these upgrades. So I'm going to go for the nanotube water filters because that will allow me to gain water income per ocean level I increase. And I do plan on increasing my ocean level at some point. Uh, next up, we've got upgrades to pick. The public baths look very efficient to me. Does anyone else see that? They give us lots of happiness as well. They cost 14 water, but I think I'm going to 
Take that, please. Uh, we're then going to head back to the city where we're getting close to our 30 water for our next habitation module. Now, this turn, I might just destroy some earthworks and then place a farm down. So if that goes there, we're now making three food per turn. Lovely. And now you can see we've got two moves. So we're going to move down to this titanium deposit. Although because it's far away, people are going to be mad. So we're going to lose two happiness per turn. But I need the titanium. I need it. So we're going to mine that. So we're getting three titanium per turn. Plus, we are trading for it as well. So hopefully, we're getting four per turn. Now, a bit concerned our power is literally running out. So it could be worth trying to chase the tritium so we can generate our own power. Alternatively, these locations with a happy face, their exploration milestones, they gave us something good last time. I've noticed these two both have tritium. Yeah, I'm going to gonna explore those. So that's two electricity. Oh, it's a lava tube. Oh, we gained 30 support because it's a, it's a symbolic landmark for people. We love long tubes. So yeah, basically we can now found a city there. Uh, but in order to do that, we need 30 food and 10 water and explore all adjacent areas. So we'll skip another day. We'll see who everyone decides to vote for because it's an election year. Yes, unfortunately, Mr. Jorge is retiring. He led a beautiful colony, but it's time for him to move on. So we got a security dude who gives us water. We've also got Thomas Foster. Oh, he's good at exploring. Oh, so we can... Oh, that's actually really good. We can get five of a resource and he also produces silicates. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm going I'm to go with this guy. So Thomas won the election. It definitely wasn't rigged by me. For these research projects, probably worth going for this one because it produces power. Uh, need a lot of silicates for that though. That is what this guy produces. We've already got 13 on us. Yeah, in the meantime, we'll expand to there so we're closer to our new city in the lava tube. Then we'll go to the next round and all big corporations are offering a gift. We're being bribed. We're finally being bribed. So we can only accept one gift. Do we want titanium or water or power? Well, we do actually have enough titanium to get our road paver. But I think I was trying to get a brine electrolyzer as well, wasn't I? I say what, the public baths are tempting me as well. They, oh, there's so many things I want. Why do I want everything? Now, nah, sod it. I'm going titanium. Right, so I've only got 20 titanium, so I can't build both of those this round, but I can build the brine electrolyzer, and that will give us plus four support every turn, because we're losing six, remember? So I've got to get that up. So I think we'll shove the very strong building over that way. Now we're only losing two per round, so that's good. So we can explore down here, which should have some water on it for just one electricity. Yep, there you go. Three water. Thank you. And that means the public baths can go in. So I'm going to shove them right next to that. Two very efficient buildings right next to each other. And now we're making plus five support per turn. We're happy again. Uh, we do just need to take our research project for this round, our card. Uh, what the hell is that building? Entertainment center. Product of architecture. I'll tell you what, that is not coming to my habitat. You can sod right off. Now let's build a robot hub. Nice and square buildings. Efficient. None of this pointy malarkey. And then we've leveled up again, so we can expand. Can we grab the city yet? Yes, we can. People are not happy. Oh, no. No. Oh, I ruined it. I wasn't meant to expand to it. I was meant to turn it into a city and I didn't. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an absolute idiot. Okay, next turn. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue this for like an hour or so off stream. Now, I'll really try and push these terraforming indexes and then we'll see how we're looking. Right, so we rejoin many years later. The year is 2186 and we're on turn 69. Nice. You'll notice the terraforming is going well. We have fauna. We have water up here. Look, we even have penguins. Uh, but we're at a point where we can do even more. You'll notice the polar ice cap up here. We can literally drop nukes on it. So we will be doing that, but not before we head down here into Trustbury. Because if we zoom in a bit closer, look, there's a bridge. And you know what that means? We need a bridge review. It's a bridge that allows my citizens to get from the main area of the city over to this very small landing area, which is actually bigger than the entire city. Using technologies of the future, there's no trust. There's no arches. It's just all bridge, baby. Now, whether that's future technology or just lazy artwork, only you can be the judge. But I give this bridge a 5.0 out of 10. Bang average.
Anyway, yeah, we'll head back because also over this way, there is a dormant volcano, which I can restart as well. Yeah, so that takes 25 of the tritium. Yeah, but in return, it damages all neighboring regional and city buildings. Oh, dear. What is nearby? So, okay, we've got we've got a mine there and a supply station there. I assume that's all that will get damaged, though. So I think we're good. Let's restart this thing. Boost the Titan awakes. Oh, yes, you can see the, the nearby buildings. They have actually been damaged, so they're not working unless I repair them. Uh, four power, four titanium. Yeah, sod it. Let's repair it. That's fine. And this one takes two power and two food. And i got to repair it because, look, we're losing 10 support per turn from the damage. So that's now repaired. Um, unfortunately, if you notice, I am actually at minus oh 147. <laughs> support every single turn we're only just over a quarter of the way to the end goal so i think we've got like four turns left uh, but let's head to the top and do some nuking sorry penguins so yeah basically dropping new oh no that is going to increase heat by 10 oh and looking up here adding 10 heat we'll actually go to the next heat level i wonder if the ice will melt because uh, we have actually been like expanding the sea levels and the ice as it gets colder and warmer and stuff um i did actually i did actually flood a city <laughs> I think that was how I lost so much of that support. Anyway, yeah, we're nuking this thing as well. So, boosh, the maker of worlds. So, there's now radiation in the area. And, yeah, so the temperature level has increased. My citizens are, like, watching the news. Oh, oh, the detail of this game. Like, they've actually said the temperature has risen by 10 degrees globally. And they've got, like, a little graph that even goes up. I feel like most games wouldn't go into that much detail. Anyway, that is great. We get plus one climate everywhere. And it looks like penguins are okay, unless there are any in that area. Because that cap has now melted anyway let's head forwards to the next turn we'll grab a skyscraper from those guys which again looks very efficient with those symbols underneath now then we're going to go into engineering turn i'm going to build our homestead because that's increased our happiness a little i mean <laughs> We don't have many turns left, really. Oh, by the way, there are animals down here as well. We've got the Arctic hares. Uh, they give us plus four support per turn. Unfortunately, that's not really making a dent. But yeah, with our new leader, she's like a bit of a hippie, like master of birds. And is that a squirrel? So we can import life forms with her. So we'll do that again. Oh, we can get lions. Okay, we have light. I imagine it's probably too cold for lions. Yeah, their minimum requirements are three temperature and two oxygen. And if we click on, I feel like this is our most developed area. And you can see we're only on zero temperature not ideal oh and oxygen is minus one so <laughs> yeah you've got some work to do anyway we have new leaders who's gonna be taking leadership why are they grayed out do they know that like we're about to end we got like two turns remaining oh he doesn't actually have any bonus we've just got the three skills do you have a bonus no she doesn't have a bonus either so with yasmin i can lower the oxygen requirements may as well give it a bash can't see it helping too much if i'm honest though yeah these are all my animals by the way i could actually lower the oxygen for the polar bear requirements we can get some polar bears involved yeah sod it yeah so basically why i'm losing those support points all the time the further you go on as we mentioned before the more like oh the more people's expectations rise so we're losing another 50 support income per turn because people want the place to look like this an engineering utopia yeah there is nothing you can do about it this is simply human nature at work so after we pick one of these yeah i think this is we've probably got two goes left i mean it doesn't look like we'll get polar bears because this life form has already been genetically modified so we can't actually modify it again um, oh oh we can get an alpine forest down though yeah what if we cover arabia in an alpine forest oh look at that it's green oh we've made something green oh man we got loads of these so basically i've been i have been spamming like these plant spreaders about so basically i can cover areas in forest so it will cover that area as well look at all the greenness oh and because we put those down we've got enough oxygen and stuff we can actually get polar bears okay i think i want polar bears to live in amazonas so there they go we've got polar bears we gained a load of support we can survive another round <laughs> Yes, polar bears. Now, we've also got more greenness we can put around. I might try this one. This is a different type of tree. Temperate forest. Decent. Oh, man, we're actually terraforming. Look at the happiness that's going up. Okay, so we've got another turn to get through. So we'll add some population to Trustbury. We'll add a soil factory as well. And a hospital. Why not? We can add more polar bears to the planet because that brings happiness. So we keep increasing our atmosphere level. So everyone's happy. Now we keep being offered the damn architecture buildings. And normally they are useful at the moment because they stop people being miserable for some reason. Don't really get the logic behind that. But fine, we'll build one. I know I wasn't meant to become 
problem then we've got architecture and bridges in the same city it makes no sense yeah you can see we're on 203 support we lose 199 at this turn so we'll do that Ooh, oh it's an election year maybe someone can turn it all around oh there you go we can do we can do a rally speech to gain support okay we'll try that come on sebastian you're all we've got now and there you go we've gained 50 support oh 50 is not enough 50 is not enough <laughs> okay well anyway i think we did pretty well we turned mars from uninhabitable martian bleakness into something that almost resembles earth yeah so basically mars failed because i let in a few pieces of architecture that is the trouble let one in and that's the end of humanity as we know it. Anyway, thanks to devs for sponsoring. Click the link in my description if you want to check out the game yourself. Super fun. So I'll catch you guys next time. Peace, love, and a planet devoid of architecture. Except for the few that slip the net. Bye, guys.